welcome back to the Bookshelf Odyssey. Uh, my name is Art, and my guest today is Jessica Thompson. She's the author of the Amazon best-selling mystery novels, A Caterer's Guide to Holidays and Homicide, and A Caterer's Guide to Love and Murder. Uh, and today she has a brand new book out called Shoot, Shovel, and Shut Up, which is an exciting new mystery that will have you wondering what secrets your neighbors might have buried in their backyard. Uh, so we'll find out more about the book today and uh, what else that Jessica has been up to. Uh, so welcome back, Jessica. Thanks for having me, Art. Yeah, it's good to have you back on. I know you were on last season or two ago, and then I've had you on my Christmas podcast as well. So um, I really appreciated um, getting to know you through this process and yeah. uh, loved your books. Thank you. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, did you say you you just started reading this one? Yes, I did. Yeah, this oh, week. Cool. So uh I yeah, I think you had mentioned it um the first time you were on and the title oh. alone was really intriguing. As soon as I found it it was like, yes. Yeah. That's it. Usually I waffle a lot on titles like, I don't know, is it good? <laughs> Yeah. This. Now, do you do you have to have a title in mind before you get started writing, or can you? Not can usually. You... Now that I have a series and there's kind of like a format that I'm mm -hmm. following for titles, it's a lot easier. But right. usually, it's like I don't know. I'll think of it at the end. <laughs> well, <laughs> when I would do uh, writing assignments and different things, I I would have to have a title. Yeah. Uh, you know, for, I don't know why, but it's like, I can't start doing anything unless I know what the title is. And that's great. It's, it's kind of like an outline, like sure. you know where you're going. Yeah. 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 Okay. So it's not too unusual then. No. <laughs> awesome. Since you've been on before, all of my standard questions, I had to throw out the window. So we're, we're going <laughs> rogue today. I do want to uh, catch up a little bit and see what you've been reading lately. I know sometimes with editing and book promotion that can get uh, the books that you want to read can get put aside, but have you come yeah. across anything lately that you would recommend to us? <laughs> oh yeah. I've been reading my own book so many <laughs> times. Uh, <laughs> Someone's always watching by J.R. Lancaster. And, and that one's kind of similar in tone to this one. So it's a mystery and it's clean, but it's not cozy, mm -hmm. more just classic. And then Murder Takes a Selfie by Shannon Simons. Okay. Cute, cozy, you know. Yeah. A yeah. beachside cozy. Yeah, both those. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I, I had uh, uh, J.R. Lancaster on a previous oh, episode. Right. And <clears throat> I really enjoyed that book. And uh, the main character especially, I just yeah. was really intriguing. So really mm -hmm. good. But yeah, yeah, uh, I would heartily recommend those. Uh, well, I don't, I, at least the first one, anyway. I, I haven't yeah. read the second one, <laughs> but yeah, yeah Murder it's good. Takes a Selfie is like the first one in a series. So she has, uh, I forget what the series is called. Ooh, I really should have looked that up. Anyway, it's like Cozies by the Sea Mysteries. So Murder Takes a Selfie is just the first one. So it's always 99 cents. Mm. I love those deals. Then they get you hooked. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I have a, I have a, a friend who will, will buy Kindle books, but he won't ever spend more than a dollar on a Kindle book I mean, for what, I don't know why, but, wow. uh, and so then I'm like, well, what do you do if you get hooked on a series? But then, you know, they're <laughs> yeah. like three or $4. He said, well, I just have to wait, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess like, there will probably be sometime a weekend. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Wait for him to go on sale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he, he and I, he and I have a different approach to reading, I guess. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess it's what's important to you. That's right. Yeah, I'm, I'm will, willing to spend money on on authors. So. <laughs> <laughs> and we all thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Uh, all right. Well, let's let's go ahead and uh, dig in here. Let's talk about that new book of yours called shoot shovel and shut up uh we're in we will do a spoiler free discussion for those who haven't read it yet uh i'm only about 50 or 60 pages in myself so if if you spoil the ending i'll i'll uh, kick you off my show no <laughs> <laughs> but okay <laughs> but uh tell us a little bit about it uh what what's it about um what can we expect going into this book so i live nearby my parents who have a longhorn cattle ranch 
but at, at the time I was living on there. So I built a house on their cattle ranch. So I was living in that house and I read one of Agatha Christie's lesser known books. Anyway, so I was like, ooh, this would work really well on a Texas ranch. So it's loosely based on it. I mean, it's not exact, but yeah. So it's, it's Death Comes as the End was her one that was written in like ancient Egypt. So it's this whole big family on one property. So I thought it would be really great on Texas Ranch where a bunch of families living in the same place like mm -hmm. I was, but if the family was bigger. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's a map in the front and the map looks pretty much just like my parents' place. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -oh. None of the people are the same. My parents okay. are way cooler than than the people in the book. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I don't have any brothers. Anyway, so so it's very loosely based on an Agatha Christie and my parents' ranch, but that's why a lot of the like chores and things are very real because it's like this is mm -hmm. how I milked my milk cow when we had one. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, and so uh, the now the title itself you said comes from like a, a, an old particular saying that oh, people yeah. would. Oh yeah, so that's in the front of the book too. It's basically like a lot of ranchers and farmers. It's this persistent idea, for better or worse. It's kind of controversial, but it's the idea that if there's a protected protected species that's harming your property like a hawk that's killing your chickens because that happens right in the first couple pages mm -hmm. if the hawk is killing your chickens you're not legally allowed to kill hawks but it's not like it's going to stop so you shoot shovel and shut up and it's also called the three s treatment so basically doing illegal things getting rid of vermin that's hurting your ranch see how it ties into mm -hmm. a mystery potential <laughs> uh -huh. there so yes. you get rid of whatever's harming your ranch and then you just bury it and don't talk about it. <laughs> now, I uh, personally don't have any experience with that, but there, uh, as I was thinking about that, um, there was an old family friend of ours. We called him grandpa. And uh, this was like my, my grandparents friend. He lived on a farm and out on the West coast. And I remember him telling me stories that kind of, fit that um, yeah. you know he would he said he would shoot deer even if it was outside of season because they were eating his his uh fruit crops but i can't remember what it was which yeah which crop it was and now this is i don't want to get too graphic but he said i i would shoot them in such a way that they wouldn't die on my property and i'm like oh grandpa oh. <laughs> why would you do that the poor to thing make them run and like yeah oh, and, not on my property not on my not my problem anymore yeah die somewhere else so uh, like oh that's terrible yeah. but but yeah then thinking of taking that kind of a uh, idea to put in a mystery novel i mean that's got that's got to be that's brimming with potential and thank you <laughs> and definitely the um like the from what i've read so far i, I mean the the tension is building and you know you're in this closed community uh and and nobody can argue like family so yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you're like oh what's gonna happen who's yeah. gonna get it you know what's what's going on <laughs> and one of my struggles was like how do i get the police not too involved mm -hmm. so the dad's the sheriff and basically okay. what he says goes so right. that that helped right and if if something needs to be covered up he's he's the guy mm -hmm. to just cover it up <laughs> yeah and even if he's not doing it intentionally, he's just ooh, like, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. And then I was also inspired by there's like this real sense of like, my land is my legacy. Mm -hmm. I don't know about all ranchers, but at least in Texas, it's, ooh, it's strong. So it's kind of that. So that's, mm -hmm. they're all, you know, trying to build up the land and keep it as their legacy. Mm hmm. Yeah, well, I, I live in Iowa, and there's a little bit of that, especially out in um, uh, in the farm. Uh, they have what they call century farms, you know, that have been in the family for multiple generations. And if one of them gets sold because the the owners died or whatever, you know, that's what we're seeing a lot of is 
Mm-hmm. Um, the, the kids won't carry on the tr- tradition. And so they end up just selling the property and they'll knock the house down and just turn it into a, a more cornfield, which, you know, for some people that I don't have to pay, you know, housing tax or anything on that. I can just turn it into a cornfield and make money. Um, yeah. But others are like, well, that's house has history. It's been there for a hundred years. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. yeah it's kind of sad, but yeah, that's what's happening here too, but it's getting turned into neighborhoods. So, oh, okay. So a yeah. lot of my parents' neighbors are older than them because they mm. bought, they bought it from someone else. So we're not generations on the land, but that's, that's the family in the book. There are mm-hmm. generations on the land mm-hmm. anyway, but our neighbors are, and yeah, as they're dying off, the kids are selling, yeah. it's turning into sub developments. Well, and I, I don't know if I can, you know, necessarily blame them if, if, I inherit a farm and I'm not a farmer, you know, what am I going to do with it? Yeah. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah. You wouldn't know what to do with it. You wouldn't know how to work it. And right. you need money. Uh, yep. Yep. Exactly. So who are, uh, who are some of the characters in your book that you want us to, uh, to know about? Well, the main character is Bria. Her, her dad actually calls her her full name, Cambria. Uh, but yeah, she goes by Bria and then, her dad is like the, you know, the patriarch. So kind of bossing everyone around. He's a bossy guy. So Bria and her brothers and their family. So brothers are married and have kids. And they all live on the property. And they built houses on the property, just like I did in real life. Mm-hmm. And uh, so then they're all staying there and working together. So the dad is named Sonny, after one of my dad's friends. <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> and uh mom passed away five years ago and bria's husband just passed away six months ago so that's why she's moving back home she tried to make it on her own because mm-hmm. she likes the independence but she has to move back and there's it's kind of bittersweet memories because she left around the same time her mom died so it's like anyway it's nice to be with family, but it's also not. <laughs> it's like you said, no one argues like family. Right. Yeah. And then, um, so the, the dad comes home. The dad goes to this meeting of the certified Texas Longhorn people. Mm-hmm. It's a meeting that my dad goes to. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, at, in like chapter one and brings some surprises with him. I guess <laughs> right. it's. I guess it's in the blurb, so I could say it. Yeah. He brings home a fiance, and everyone's really surprised because, you know, it's a whirlwind thing. And because he's the sheriff, he also hired a new deputy, and he's going to stay with them for a little while while he finds a place. And the deputy is very handsome <laughs> and, and looks a lot like Bria's late husband, who she didn't actually like very much. So it's okay uh. that it's only been like six months. Right. <laughs> that's pretty fast, I guess. Anyway, so she's feeling like it's almost like a second chance. Mm-hmm. So there's a, a little bit of a love triangle because the property manager is Sam and we love Sam. So Sam's yes. like best friends with the brothers and the property manager and I don't know. This yeah. is practically part of the family. Yeah, yeah. Uh, old, old friends. For, from what I've read so far, uh, you know, the, the character interaction is great. The the uh, atmosphere is is lovely. Um, it sounds like you're writing a lot from experience, uh, from your <laughs> own experience. So <laughs> I do try to make real people. You know. Yeah, yeah. You know, just as long as you're not out, you know, shooting people and burying them in your <laughs> <Yeah>. backyard, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's where the the similarities end. <laughs> That's right. So not any people. But all the, so it's a lot of, I mean, you know, it's a murder mystery. So, you know, they're not accidents, Mm -hmm. but they look like accidents. And all those things are real things on my parents' property. Like Mm -hmm. we know two or three, now I can't remember. We know two or three people who have died on the machinery Mm -hmm. because it rolls. They were doing it drunk. So don't drive your machinery drunk. But yeah. Anyway, so and like poisons that you keep around 
and that's just normal and tranquilizers and mm -hmm. anyway mm -hmm. all that stuff all the stuff that's being used for murder is based on real things on my parents property yeah well i i just heard um around here that there's a, a farm just out of town they had their well checked and turns out there was a, a like a heavy um percentage of arsenic in their well <laughs> And they're trying to figure out how that happened. <laughs> Whoa! I'm, so I, I could just happen. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know if somebody uh, was wanting to get rid of them or what. I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, the strangest things happen. You never know, yeah. and especially in a mystery. If it's uh, coincidence or uh, yeah, foul and play. How did right? they find out? Just the routine check, or I, like, I guess yeah, I didn't get the details. But, people didn't uh, so, feel good folks were talking about it um and they they mentioned like oh yeah this guy they had a well checked and there's arsenic in it <laughs> like yeah! how do you how do you miss that <laughs> yeah yeah really i wonder if they you know they didn't feel good so they got M might have been yeah got it checked <laughs> yeah because i'm never i'm pr um never say never but i'm probably never going to use arsenic because <laughs> it's messy yeah yeah, it's, uh, it doesn't fit in a cozy, you know. Right, right. The real yeah. thing. Now your uh, your other series that's more of a cozy kind of setting. Yeah. This one is more of a traditional set mystery. Yeah. So this yeah. one, I guess I couldn't not talk about food. So there is right. <laughs> so there's a recipe on my website that goes with the book, but there's no recipes in it. Right. But then yeah, my other two, they're culinary cozy mysteries. So they have recipes in them mm -hmm. and she's a caterer. So she talks about food a lot. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, so yeah, that's one of my favorite kinds of cozies to read are the food related ones. Yay. There's make me so hungry. And, <laughs> <laughs> <Thanks>. and <laughs> I, I will say uh, uh, to check out your website because you have uh, beautiful pictures of food. And I think I saw recipes Thanks. there and yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, uh, so all the all the short stories have recipes to go with them on the website, mm -hmm. but then the full length books are the ones with recipes actually in the pages. I I just got a new cozy mystery um, from uh, Darcy Hanna, a series she writes, and I haven't read it yet, but it takes place over Halloween. And I looked in the back, and there it was full of recipes, all this pumpkin spice kind of recipes and i'm like all right cool. <laughs> I'm, oh, gonna, cool. I'm gonna be baking this this fall <laughs> yeah oh good timing <laughs> absolutely <laughs> cool. all right and then um i also wanted to talk a little bit about kind of a uh, a newish um uh, approach or a job that you've been you've been doing called bittersweet oh. book tours yeah uh, what, what can you tell us about that so it's a service for authors that Usually it's when they have a new release coming out, but it really can, really can be anytime you want to promote your book. So it's there, it's also called blog tours or virtual book tours. Basically, authors don't really, I mean, you can, but don't really hit the road and do book tours anymore. They don't like travel the country and go to bookstores to sign books. Usually it's more virtual now. So you go like this. You come on arts podcasts and arts YouTube and you talk about your book and you hold it up and go, buy my book. <laughs> I've got hungry dogs and book. cats. I'm hungry. <laughs> oh, anyway. <laughs> and uh, uh, Instagram reviews and newsletter spotlights and yeah, podcasts, mm -hmm. Facebook groups, Facebook group takeovers, all that kind of stuff. So there's so many different ways to advertise your book. So you kind of hit the road virtually mm -hmm. and it can be really hard to set that up for yourself. So there's services out there that do it for you. So basically because I've set them up for myself, I know some people to call. So when it's your first <laughs> book and you try to do it for yourself, it's, it's really hard. You can do it. Mm. you can but it's really hard so i probably called like i say called more like messaged and emailed like a hundred people and then a few people say yes 
And then you can do that every time for every book and you get more and more contacts. So now I know who to call. So hmm? you don't want to schedule your own virtual book tour. You can call me because I can do it faster. <laughs> save, save a lot of stress because there's already so much stuff you're thinking about when you're releasing the book that right. Yeah. It's yeah. Nice have someone else do it so then i line up a bunch of contacts and then i give you a spreadsheet and and then you write those guest posts for blogs and that Mm -hmm. stuff yeah so so you're kind of like a almost like a publicity team for them yeah you're uh, getting them hooked up to the uh to the uh the mega book podcasts like mine right (laughs) yeah yeah that's a good way to put it so it's a short-term publicity team right yeah um yeah and i i so i I was wondering if some of this was inspired by some of your experiences that maybe the things you you went through and thought boy i wish i had somebody to do this for me and totally yeah because yeah it's really hard with your first books so yeah it's really nice to have someone else schedule your book tour blog tour yeah now do you only do first time authors or, do you, or are you open to anyone who might I'm be... open to anyone okay yeah anyone in any genre but i think mostly i've had mystery authors so far just because that's who i know right right <laughs> and, and they're more um independent kind of authors or are oh, they yeah. or does yeah. it matter yeah um it can be like a publisher that hires me, but usually it's independent book publishers. Yeah. 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 Great. Um, well, yeah, and I know I've had a, a couple come on through your service and it's just yeah. really, <laughs> uh, truly great interviews and uh, lovely people I got to meet through that. So <laughs> oh, good. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know if I'm sound self-serving or, or what here, but <laughs> it's uh, it's a service i've benefited from just as a podcaster so uh i yeah, I, and yeah. everyone i've talked to everyone i've sent your way is like wow working with art was great so <laughs> all right you. well I, i'm definitely leaving that one in <laughs> 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 Good. <laughs> i'm not going to edit that one out yeah <laughs> um yeah great great i'm glad i'm glad to hear that all right and then uh i, I also wanted to uh ask some writing type questions and thoughts but one of the things I, I love about your Instagram account is you just look like you have so much fun with yeah. social media. So, uh, you know, some some mm-hmm. authors I follow, they tend to just post pictures of their books, which is fine. You know, uh, I, I pretty much only post whenever I get a new episode out. So yeah. when there's something <laughs> uh, to post about. Right. But, but you just look like you're having a blast and you got some <laughs> some great funny videos up and all that. But one of the things I see pop up a lot is you you have these things uh, that you call the uh, writing retreats. And so as a writer, could you talk a little bit about that? What is a writing retreat? How do you do it? Um, how has it benefited you uh, as a writer? Sure. Yeah. I love writing retreats. They're great. So because I have some writing friends that are local, I just do it with the same group every time. Like some of us can go this time and some of us can't. And then the next time some of us can go. So it's really great, especially if you already have a group. But I've heard that even if you don't have a group, you can sign up for because there are like businesses that do it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so all I do is like at cost with friends. And yeah, most of my videos are like, (laughs) I think the popular one recently was like what our husbands think we're doing on the book tour (laughs) versus what we're actually doing. Yes. Our husbands think we're like having pillow fights all night long, but <laughs> we're really like, like we're so into typing that someone will ask a question and I'm like, what? What? Who am I? Where? <laughs> what time is it? <laughs> what? It's already midnight? Oh, I guess we should go to sleep. Anyway, so, so we kind of, it's great because we vacillate between, well, I go on to dinner or something. Mm hmm. But most, mostly we have dedicated writing time. That's why it's so great because most of my friends have kids. So we're not at home with constant, what? 
<laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, I'm thirsty. They get water. Anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I laugh because we, we, I, that happens here. Yeah. <laughs> Painfully true. <laughs> mm-hmm. My my wife's been uh she's been working on a master's degree and she finally got a sign for her desk that said, Go ask your dad. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I've thought about getting a t-shirt or a hat that says it. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah. So yeah. So- the the distractions at home are so constant. Like even even if the kids are gone at school all day, that pile of dishes is staring at you. Mm-hmm. So, if you go on a writing retreat, it's amazing the difference. I mean, I thought it would be just like being at home alone, but it's much more than that. So, you get hours and hours, however much time you want, to really dive in, have a train of thought that lasts more than 10 minutes. And sometimes we'll do, so there's lots of different writing retreats you can do, like mm-hmm. Our, our most recent one was basically a, an at-home one, and we would just go, let's see, we went to the library for a lot of the day on like a Friday over the summer. So it was like, have your husbands either work from home or take a day off if they really want to, or older kids are watching younger kids, or anyway, mm-hmm. lots of good options. So we went to library for during the day. And then we went home and like, I don't know, ate dinner, kissed our kids. And then, and then we went and (laughs) we had a slumber party. (laughs) 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 Didn't really work out. A lot of people just went home to sleep in their own beds. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Anyway, so we were going to all sleep at someone's house, but it was really like, we just went until late and then broke up. And then whether you stayed or not. In the morning, you were at home and like made sure everyone's brushing their teeth and whatever, Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Yeah. So it kind of gets you, well, I mean, it's what it sounds like. It gets you away, it gets you to be able to focus. And, and I, I I expect having, you know, that group of friends you can kind of bounce ideas off to who understand story writing can Mm -hmm. be invaluable. Yeah. Yeah, having a writing community is, yeah, invaluable. It's yeah. great. Awesome. Yeah. So somebody says, "I want to start one." Is it complicated? How, how do you how do you work it out? You just say, "We're going to do it." Yeah. <laughs> so if you already know the people, then you just go, "Hey guys, who's free this weekend?" Because I want to go to. I think the the next one I was thinking about is Brownwood, Texas. So it's like two hours away and there's this really cool bookstore. So it's like mm. somewhere to go, but not super involved because we did one writing retreat where we didn't actually get any writing done because we went to too cool of a place. So it was like, well, that didn't work. So we need to go somewhere where it's like there's one place to visit. That's it. Otherwise, it's just... Hotel room with a lot of sitting area Mm -hmm. because no one wants to write in bed all day long. Well, maybe some people do, but (laughs) got to change positions. So, right. (laughs) So let's see when I'm looking for a writing retreat location, I look for one cool place to go that also has a lot of sitting. So like a cool bookstore or a nature preserve somewhere like that. Uh, and then I look for a hotel room that's cheap and big enough for, we usually end up with four people, even though we're a group of like 10. So however many people you think it might be with the potential to add another room, you know, Mm -hmm. joining doors and stuff in case you have a bigger group and then sitting areas wherever you're, where you're staying. So like big comfy chairs in the room or in the lobby or, you know, places to sit. And then also we don't want to have to leave as soon as we have to check out of the hotel. So we look for places that have like lobbies with good places to sit or 
you know, there's like a veranda outside or there's always a plan for like, okay, what are we doing after that last day before we go home, but after we're checked out? So that's, that's the big deciding factor about where we do our writing retreats. Sure. And then how, how often do you do those? Um, uh, since it's usually me, it's just like whenever I feel like <laughs> <laughs> uh, once a year, twice a year. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Once a week. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Whenever I feel the need, <laughs> need to get I away. get the itch and I'm like, hey guys, let's do it. <laughs> <That's> it. <laughs> I, I need to go. Uh, I need to go murder someone. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> right. And they're All like, right. wait, what? I don't want to come with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're a mystery writer. From, you write from experience. <laughs> Actually, no a lot of my short stories are set in places where we've gone to writing retreats. Uh, excellent. <laughs> the story in this one was our last writing retreat. It's like a cabin. Okay. Really fun. Great. Yeah. So uh, what are some of your uh, short story collections there that oh, yeah. you've written for? Uh, I'm in a couple of the Aconite Cafe anthologies. This mm -hmm. one's A Haunting of Revenge. And then in the mail right now is the second one, uh, A Beach of a Crime. That one just came out in July. And then I Alba. I haven't actually said this out loud. I Alba. I don't know. It's uh, uh, Roz Marshall or Rose Dewar. She puts together. And this mm -hmm. one was a Kickstarter, so there were three volumes. So I'm in volume two. And okay. it's Riddles, Resolutions, and Revenge. So this was a New Year's one. It's a thick one. Yeah. Well, anyway. Looks full of great stories. <laughs> yeah. So these, this one was more like a 15,000-word story. Mm -hmm. And the Aconite Cafe ones are like 5,000 words. So like less than an hour versus like, I don't know, maybe two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so how fast you read? Yeah, yeah. I know there's like a, a word limit for what counts as a short story and what's a novella or yeah. whatever. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Whatever long it's it takes me. Like so. whoever is setting up the anthology, I just do what they tell me. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And then I put one together. Uh -huh. I put one together with those writing retreat friends, Beyond the Woods, a supernatural anthology. And it's like spooky stories that are family friendly. So mm -hmm. it feels like every Halloween -y book or campfire book is like either super gory or not at all. And it's like cutesy. Mm -hmm. So I was aiming for middle of the road, still creepy, but not like you won't be able to sleep. Okay. That's, oh, that's too bad. No, <laughs> no, uh, no, no, no. I, 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 I get it. Cause I, I like, when I say I like scary stories, it, uh, you know, like movies, I get recommended all these horrible, just, you know, violent films that are <laughs> like, I know, I don't want gross guys. I want scary, <laughs> you know? Yeah. gross. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. So these are scary, <laughs> but they're not gross. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> like my book, my stories in here was like, one of them, I realized how similar Frankenstein and Frosty the Snowman are. Okay, yeah. So, there's a lot of similarities. Think about it. Anyway, so, kind of a murderous snowman. It's written in the language of the original Frankenstein, mm -hmm. but it's about a snowman. <laughs> and that's the one that you, you wrote, you said? Yeah. Is that right? And then okay. I also did a, a like modern retelling of uh, Hound of the Baskervilles. What? Sure. Chupacabra. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> because okay. after a lot of researching into chupacabra they're kind of real they're just really messed up dogs sure they're not supernatural they're dogs with extreme mange yeah yeah so i was like "Ooh, that sounds like pound of the baskervilles we can work with that yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah all right well i think i i know what what book i'll be needing to pick up here for this <laughs> october i think so <laughs> oh, I have a little stack. That's right. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs>
And, and so you're, for your next uh, endeavor, you're going to be a book model. Is that it? <laughs> yeah, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's part of the job. There you are. Yep. <laughs> Got to look good holding a stack of books, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, that's, uh, I love it. And and your work is all uh, family friendly and, and yeah. uh, so anyone, it's good for anyone uh, who <laughs> wants to enjoy a clean mystery yeah. uh, in that sense. So, and I know, I think most or all of your writers group um, kind of skew that way. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So good, good quality writing and uh, good <laughs> content. So, but yeah. Yeah. They're all clean authors too. <clears throat> yep. Great. Um, and then I know you have coming up in the new year. Um, let's see. It's uh, Kidder's Guide to Vi- Valentine's and Violence. Is that it? Yeah. That's all right. It. You got it. Yeah, I was All just right. making the cover, so I don't have anything to show you yet. Okay, but, no problem. But uh, yeah, well, so it's uh, it's in the characters' lives, it happens first. So it's kind of a prequel to these. Mm-hmm. But yeah, same series. It's Violet and Jake. And we kind of find out their origin story. Is, uh, yeah. If I, so this yeah. is like when they met. Sure. And they meet kind of over a case. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, in the first book, uh, they're married and uh, that's kind of part of what struck me is like, you know, this book is kind of taking place where a lot of series ends, you know, yeah. <laughs> they get married, the series is done. Um, so yeah. <laughs> not, not all of them, I guess that's kind of changing more, but, uh, but yeah, yeah. It, it's a really enjoyable, cozy mystery series. I'm sure I'll have you back on to talk about that when it comes out. Um, Thanks. I hope so. Uh, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll do some uh, publicity for you. <laughs> Great. So, all well, right. Yeah, I'll talk more about it then. Then I'll have something to show you. There. Okay. Great. And uh, some more recipes, I'm sure. And yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> and yeah, Perfect. that one comes out in January 2024. So that will be just in time for Valentine's Day then. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, Jessica, thanks for coming on today. Yeah, um, thanks. Where can, uh, what do you got coming up that you want to promote or where can folks find you online? Uh, my website is jessicathompsonauthor.com and I got lots of information on there. And yeah, like we said, lots of, lots of bonus recipes uh, and signing up, sign up for my newsletter because I, Mm-hmm. I always try to add something good in my newsletter, some kind of bonus content. So there's recipes or giveaways or games. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Uh, and yeah, I, my favorite social media is Instagram. So yeah, come find me on Instagram at Jessica TH author. And I had to add a two at the end. Jessica, uh, Jessica TH author. And then the number two. Mm-hmm. Cause my first account, I don't know. Still can't get into it. It's there, mm-hmm. but I'm locked out. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, I had to rebuild. Anyway, oh, it's, and it's I'm too bad. I'm getting more on Facebook lately, uh, and there I'm just Jessica T H author. All right. So, uh, yeah, I find her online. Um, sign up for a newsletter, uh, all, all good, uh, stuff I I've enjoyed. So <laughs> thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I got to get back to reading. So <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, it's great to have you on again. Um, and again, uh, your book is called shoot shovel and shut up. It's available now, uh, where, uh, finer books are sold. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, if your bookstore doesn't have it, uh, you better have them order it. Yeah, right. you can have them order it or yeah, yep. uh, on Amazon. Yep, absolutely. Or, or right. paperback. Or it's on Vela too. If you okay. Like Vela. Well, yeah. Um that's is that that's through Amazon as well, right? Is is that yeah. Vela? Yeah. Yeah, it's the episodic one, so it's basically reading a chapter at a time. Okay. But it's uh, the same same book. Yeah. <laughs> you just get it like they they used to get books back in the old days. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're right. All right. Well, thanks again for coming on. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah, and thanks, Art. Can't wait to see what you come up with next. Thanks. So, <laughs> uh, uh, take care. Thanks.